We are with us Marcus Meissner, the managing partner of Camelot Consultants, and he is engaged with the Royal Commission responsible for the interims management of the multimodal logistics hub, which is going to be set up in an area of 70 square kilometers in Yambu Phase 2. It is a very big project and uh, the investment in this project will be to the tune of around 15 billion US dollars. So it is going to be up and running uh, by 2030 and the first operations are expected in 2019. Today, Marcus, you uh, gave us a presentation on your MMLH, uh, which is That's Multimodal uh, Logistics Hub. And, and you said that uh, 18,000 jobs are going to be created by this hub. So we are at this uh, group of colleges and institutes. So what kind of uh, programs do you suggest we should be starting for this MMLH? So first, thank you for inviting us and uh, for the speech. As our CEO, the, uh, Dr. Alain Nassif, mentioned quite clearly, it's one of the anchor investment of Royal Commission and one of the key projects. In order to get employment on GDP growth, as you mentioned, 18,000 plus expected in 2030. In order to get that, we need qualified resources. And it starts next year where we need uh, management resources, which coming on from a background like chemical background, study, PhD and graduate, but then develop in logistics skills and supply chain skills. So what we expect from a college side is starting management courses at the beginning, right at the beginning. You can start it even yesterday in order to prepare them to understand logistics and supply chain, steering that. Then the next level what we expect is then uh, the research. We, we have to research about rail development in this region and then we have to make a, a lot of mechanics, uh, engineering uh, related to rail and to logistic infrastructure like cranes and so on. So it's not just the driver itself but it's also how to maintenance, how to build it. And in that regard, we expect that the college will educate graduates, postgraduates, and, and even on a PhD level, uh, on that regard that uh, logistic insights, logistic is, is a procurement, it's, but it's also transportation and storage, and uh, give them an opportunity and tool set that we can work with them together. The investment will be taken by all commission by the government, but the majority will be the private investors. And these private investors are leaking today of skilled workers, handling good handling, um, then we have the crane handlers, but mo mainly on the, on the lower management to the senior level management. So it's a, it's, it's a great chance to develop yourself starting from today and become a, a future um, manager of this MMLH. And to finalize this, there's nothing in this region. That means we expected 15 to 25 multi-logistic hubs in this region. So it's a great opportunity for this region to educate your people. And yeah, we will be the biggest, but there are many others to come. We are with Ali Hassan, who is a marketing specialist at the Royal Commission Yambu Colleges and Institutes. He is also our alumni. So Ali, you have also been a speaker here at the forum. Uh, what would you say about the standard of education at RCYCI and how did you benefit from it in your career? Yeah, sure. Uh, standards of uh, education in RCYCI is an international standard, of course. Uh, considering the English Language Foundation that we have, actually it built up um, a, lot of, uh, a lot in us. Having uh, an, an excellent uh, English language uh, capability is, is actually has, has given us a lot of opportunities. Uh, in terms of uh, finding a job or, or, or so. The master degree uh, program actually is the chance for me to, sp to be specialized in marketing. The specializations that I was really was looking for during my job in, as, as a recruiter, before I was looking for uh, a place where I study marketing in a, a very sophisticated place. And this actually um, feature was provided from YIC at that time in 2014 when I was graduated. Well, alhamdulillah, now when I shifted to RCYCI, I, I can say that I'm back home now to, to the place I was raised in and I was made in. So thank you so much actually for this. 
Dr. Gregory Muffet, the consultant for NCAA, that is a National Commission for Academic Accreditation and Assessment. And he has been the consultant with NCAA for the past six years. And he spoke at the second forum on day one on achieving learning outcomes. So, Dr. Gregory, you said that it should be a bottom-up approach where we should try and look at an ideal student who gets a very good job placement. And from his experience and from his feedback, uh, we should try to draw the outcomes, uh, learning outcomes of a course. So, would you elaborate on that, please? Yes, uh, I would like to see that the students who are high achievers, who graduate, are successful in their jobs, as well as the employers, that work with that they work with from them we learn the kinds of outcomes that are required to get jobs we don't want to graduate students that don't align their learning with the jobs they're going to do so this alignment is critical the academic professor is an expert in the field and should be able to take this information from the student and from the employer and put it into a formal academic perspective that clearly and deliberately includes their input in the formation of the course learning outcomes as well as the program learning outcomes. And this will lead to high levels of employment, which is exactly what you want. You want your graduates to be employed uh, right directly and this alignment is essential. Fadi Al Hirsch, the central contact person and coordinator of the SAP Alliance project. He also gave a presentation on this on day one of the forum and he's going to talk to us. So Fadi, the government of Saudi Arabia is allocating 24% of the national budget, which is a big amount, 191 billion rials to education. Um, and the idea is to increase employability so that more and more Saudis are job ready. And this is also the theme of our uh, forum. Uh, so uh, SAP Alliance project has uh, been there for the past several years, 2009 it started. So how has it benefited our students? How is your project helping in increasing the employability of our students? Yeah, actually our project uh, from 2009 it was able to uh, Im help the students around 1800 students to qualify them on SAP projects and uh, around 400 plus students of them they get involved in, through online courses not only classes in the in the classroom and uh, the students get ready with the knowledge of SAP technology they get equipped with this and then the second thing is that they can after that, they can uh, attend the certification exam to qualify in global professional certifications in the area of SAP uh, technologies, depend on the student uh, interest. Uh, next to this, the student had the opportunity to apply his knowledge through internships. So it's a mixture of enabling the student with SAP knowledge, along with the internship, along even with soft skills such as how the student can make himself ready for interviews, how to prepare his CV, and uh, even how to create a profile in LinkedIn. Uh, these kind of soft skills are embedded along with the SAP uh, knowledge, along with the internship. Altogether, it can uh, make our graduates more ready for the job market, and this is the key uh, success factor that you can um, uh, combine all this together for a certain student. And by the way, the cost of this is very high, if, especially in the dual study program, the cost per student is around $40,000, which is very high, and, uh, and, and, and it is supported by the SAP for free for the students of the first batch, which is a very valuable and added value to our students. Dr. Hani Ibrahim, the advisor to the Director General of the Royal Commission Yambu Colleges and Institutes, talked about innovating our future and delivering 21st century education on day one of the forum. So Dr. Hani, in the past uh, three, four years, many centers of excellence have come up, um, be it the Technology Transfer Center or the Education Development Center, the Research Center and many such at the sector. So what is really the purpose or rationale of establishing these centers of excellence and how are they helping the sector in achieving its goal of academic excellence? At RCYCI, we actually see these centers as uh, 
uh, integral part of the educational uh, ecosystem. Now, this is for enriching the student's experience uh, and as, as well as doing its, uh, its purpose. Now, let's just take an example for uh, the technology transfer center, for example. Now, it has one purpose, which is to do technology transfer, but it has another central purpose, which is to help the students themselves know what technology transfer is all about and they can actually practice in as part of their education what technology transfer means. Thank <laughs> you.